the corner of my eye, I caught the glint of a gun outside the window. I dove for the floor just as it went off. The slug burned a furrow across the top of my head. But I staggered to the door and lurched outside. Then a fist like a bowling ball caught me on the side of the head. Down I went. The New Adventures of Michael Shane, Private Detective, starring Jeff Chandler. Michael Shane, reckless, red-headed Irishman, is back again in his old haunts in New Orleans. This is your director, Bill Russo, inviting you to listen to another transcribed episode, which we call The Case of the Carnival Killer. Hello? Michael Shane? Yeah, that's right. Hello, Red. Well, hello. Who's this? My name's Diane, but you don't know me. Well, we'll have to change that. You're a sleepyhead. I've called your office twice already this morning. Oh? Uh-huh. You sitting at your desk, Mike? Yeah, why? Open the top drawer. Huh? Go ahead. Open it. Okay. You see anything interesting in there? Yeah, it's half of a $50 bill. That's right. How did it get in my desk drawer? Very simple. I put it there last night. You did? Well, look, I don't get it. I came to see you last night, but you weren't there. Oh. I was out on the edge of town watching a carnival set up. Oh, that's quite a coincidence. Anyway, I left the half of 50 for you. Very nice of you, sugar, but I'm afraid half a bill isn't going to do little Mike much good. I know, Red. But if you'll come over to room 23 of the Donna Hotel in an hour, I'll have the other half for you. You know, you just made yourself a date, Diane. Uh, just one thing. Hmm? Any particular reason why you're giving me 50 bucks? Why, someone's been bothering me, Red. I, I want to find out who. Is that good enough? For 50 bucks, it's plenty good enough. Okay, I'll be over in an hour. I'll bring my half of the 50. Oh, one thing more, Red. Yeah, what is it? Bring your own scotch tape. <laughs> In a moment, we'll return to the new adventures of Michael Shane and the case of the Carnival Killer. Well, I've had a few interesting phone calls in my time, but never I need to top the one from a sugar-voiced girl named Diane, who told me she put half of a $50 bill in my desk the night before while I was out on the edge of town watching a carnival get set up. Diane told me to come to a room at the Donna Hotel in an hour, and she'd give me the other half of the bill, which was the best offer I'd had all week. So, about 45 minutes later, after I finished the morning paper, I was just about to leave and go on over when there was a knock on the door. Come in. Mr. Shane? Yeah. How do, Mr. Shane, sir? My name's Landau. Landau? Yeah, I run the carnival. You was out there last night. You left your car. Oh, yeah, yeah. I thought maybe you might want a little work done, patrolling, stuff like that. Well, no, I don't think so, sir. I usually take care of things like that myself. Yeah, I'm sure you could. Huh? You, you know Midget? Midget? Oh, you're right, Mr. Shane. Oh, you're sure all right. I'm no vision on my... <laughs> yeah, well, look, it wasn't that funny. Take it easy. You're blowing the papers off my desk. Look, look, it's Midget. nice of you to come all the way in here to tell me you don't want to hire me, Lando, but I don't quite understand why... Oh, well, that's the point, Mr. Shane. Sorry. Right. I do want to hire you. Huh? But you just said no, you... No, the patrol, the carnival. No, sure not, Mr. Shane. No, sir, I want to hire you to... Find someone for me. Oh? Who is it? Well, here's a picture. No wonder you want to find a lander. Yeah, she's in one of my acts, Mr. Shane. She's a dancer, and she disappeared last night, and while I'm... I'm worried about her. Yeah, I'd be worried, too, if a girl looked like that left me. Her name is Diane, Mr. Shane. Well, she's sure a beautiful... Huh? I said her name is Diane. 
Yeah, that's what I thought you said. I sure do miss her. You uh, you say she disappeared last night, huh? That's right. I had to call off her act. The customers didn't like it a bit, so that's why... Yeah, I yeah. Okay, it. Landau, I'll take the job. I'll get in touch with you as soon as I turn up anything. Well, no, I sure do appreciate that. Yes, I sure do. You know, I got a strong hunch Diane isn't going to be hard to find at all. Well, this looked like easy money day for Shane. First, a girl named Diane called up and offered me 50 bucks. And now this giant Lando is hiring me to find a girl named Diane. Simple, huh? After he left, I put the snapshot he'd given me of Diane in my pocket and went over to the Donna Hotel. The door to room 23 was ajar. No one answered. So I pushed it the rest of the way open and went in. Diane was sitting in a chair by the bed. Yeah, she matched the snapshot in my pocket, all right. She was wearing a green scarf around the neck. Ordinarily, it wouldn't look good on her. Right now, it didn't. Maybe it was because it was knotted too tightly around her throat. Diane had been strangled. I stood there staring a couple of seconds. Then I heard the door close behind me. Hello, Shane. Inspector Lefevre. Yeah. What are you doing here? Just waiting to ask you what you're doing here. Oh, Looks I... like you two had sort of a one-sided quarrel. Look, I just got here. Sure, this trip. I haven't been here before. No? Lefevre, this is one you couldn't hang on me with a meat hook. I didn't kill her. Mm-hmm. Oh, smart enough. If I had, why would I come back into a room? Because you dropped half your fee. I what? I found the torn half of a 50-buck bill here. Uh, a uh, 50? Yeah. Now, you wouldn't by any chance have the other half, would you? Well, I... I... Anyway, you don't mind if I search you, do Now, now, look, Lefevre... Stand you're... still. Just a formality, Shane. Just... Well, well, what do you know? Okay, okay, so I've got the other half of the bill. Well, what does it prove? I don't know. Yet. Now, look, this is a story. I've never seen the girl before. Yeah. I'm giving it to you straight, Lefevre. She phoned me and told me she put one half of the bill in my desk. She said to come over and pick up the other half. Hey, look, what time did she die? We haven't found out yet. Why? Because I talked to her on the phone at 10 when she was very much alive then. 10, huh? Yeah, just about an hour ago. I didn't leave my office after that until just a few minutes ago. Hmm. We'll check. Yeah, I know you will. Oh, uh, look, this has been swell, but if you don't mind, I'll be leaving. Okay, Shane. I don't mind. Uh, just one thing. What is it? New Orleans is a great city. So what? Stay in it. Well, I figured Lefevre wouldn't mind too much if I just went to the edge of town, so I headed for the carnival, trying to figure out a way to break the news about Diane to Landau. When I got to the carnival grounds, I could see that everything was set up and ready to go. It was still too early in the afternoon for much of a crowd. There were just a few people wandering around seeing the sights. I looked around for Landau, couldn't spot him. Then I saw a very handsome-looking woman in her middle thirties walking toward me. She was dressed in a gypsy outfit. And in her hand, she carried a deck of cards. Mister. Yeah? I tell your fortune, mister. Oh, thanks. I am Carlotta. I can tell your fortune good. I give you a reading with cards. Not today, Carlotta. Have you seen Landau around anywhere? What do you want with Landau? I want to talk to him. That okay with you? Landau is not here. Yeah, so I see. How about looking in that crystal ball and telling me where I can find him? You make fun of Carlotta. Oh, relax. Landau is maybe in town. He come back tonight. Okay, thanks. You leave message for Landau? No, I get... Oh, wait a minute. I might as well. The rest of you kind of a people ought to know, too, I guess. What you talking about? There was a girl dancer with a carnival named Diane. What about Diane? She's dead. Murdered. Dead. Well, you don't seem very surprised, Carlotta. I knew. What do you mean, you knew? I knew she would die. How'd you know? Two nights ago, I give Diane reading with cards. I turn up death card for her. Oh, she had me fooled for a minute. I thought we were on the trail or something. I tell you, I knew the cards told me. The cards tell me everything. Okay, Carlotta, okay. Have it your own way. 
Go on back to your solitaire. I'm going to take a look around. She glared at me a moment and then turned away. And I started wandering around again. Then as I passed the shooting gallery, I saw a very smooth-looking young guy doing some fancy shooting. Matter of fact, it was a little too fancy. I stopped to watch him. Nice. Yeah. You look like you've been practicing. Yeah. You, uh, with the carnival? Uh-huh. What's your specialty? Pickpocket eye. Oh, sounds interesting. It is. It's an act. You, uh, hear about what happened to the dancing girl, Diane? Yeah. Any idea who might have... No. Oh? Now, look, private eye. Landau told me about Diane getting killed. He also told me he hired you. I told him I thought he was nuts. Why? You're just busting out all over with questions, aren't you? Yeah. Okay, I... Wait a second. I'll keep it simple. Wasn't anybody in the county who killed Diane. Nobody had it in for her. You sound pretty sure. I used to go around with her. I ought to know. I see. You say you used to go with her. When did you break up with her? Either ten minutes ago, when I found out she was dead. <laughs> had enough answers for your shame? Yeah. For now, uh... Jimmy. Jimmy. And why don't you just drop it? The whole deal. Thanks for the tip, sharpshooter. I'll uh, think it over. Nice guy, Jimmy. I started walking back toward where I'd parked my car. The crowd was a lot larger now. Just about dark. I passed the merry-go-round. There were about half a dozen kids riding on it. And then the withered little old-timer who was operating it looked up and saw me. He motioned to me, and I went over to him. Howdy, mister. Hello. You're the private dick, ain't you? Yeah, that's right. Landau pointed you out to me. Name's Chickasaw. Oh? What's on your mind besides running the merry-go-round, Chickasaw? Running the merry-go-round, sure. Sure, that's all old Chickasaw's good for these days. Me that's run carnivals wouldn't make this look sick in my time. Well, you sound kind of bitter. Run the merry-go-round in this county is about as low as you can get, mister. Nothing but punks in this county makes me sick. You don't think much of the others, huh? Punks, all of them. Just punks. Except maybe Carlotta. She's not so bad. But that jug hit a deep land on that greasy little slick of Jimmy. All the women running after him like crazy. Why, Carlotta taught that punk all he knows about his act and the county, too. Now, uh, look, Chickasaw, I, I don't think you're motion me over just to tell me you don't like any of these people here. You're right there, mister. I want to talk to you about Diane getting bumped off. Yeah, what about it? I think maybe I can help you, mister. Hey, I know... hey, wait a minute. What's the matter? Over there, near that sideshow. Look. It was a girl I was staring at. A girl just melting into the crowd. I blinked and looked again. Then I pulled a snapshot out of my pocket and looked at it. Yeah, there wasn't any doubt about it. There she was, very much alive. Diane, the girl who'd been strangled. In a moment, we'll return to the new adventures of Michael Shane and the case of the Carnival Killer. It all started when a carnival dancer named Diane telephoned me and told me to come over to her hotel and pick up the other half of a 50-buck bill she'd left in my desk drawer. Then, just as I was getting ready to leave my office, in came a large economy-sized character named Landau, who ran the carnival and who wanted me to find his missing dancer, Diane. I put two and two together, and they led me to Diane's hotel room. When I arrived, I found a strangle. I went out to the carnival grounds to break the news to Lando. While there, I made the acquaintance of some of the carnival characters. Carlotta, the gypsy fortune teller who said she'd predicted Diane's death. Jimmy, the smooth-looking guy Diane used to go with, who didn't seem very disturbed about her death. And Chickasaw, the old fellow who ran the merry-go-round and hated everybody else in the carnival. Then while I was talking to Chickasaw, I spotted her across the grounds. Diane, the girl who'd been strangled. I jet propelled my way through the crowd after her. Hey! Hey, wait a minute, hey! 
What? Okay, sister. Oh, let go of me. Not yet. What do you want? We're going to have a little talk, Diane, and find out what this is all Diane. about. Diane, oh no, you've made a mistake. Oh, you're the one who's making. I'm, a... I'm not Diane. I'm Sally. Oh, come on, don't give me that. I got a picture of my. No, partner. it's the truth. I'm Diane's twin sister, Sally. You're, you're what? I'm Sally, Diane's twin sister. Twin. Yes. Oh, why doesn't somebody tell me these things? I didn't know she had a twin. We had a dancing act together until. Until. Hey, look! How come you were so scared just now? Well, I, I saw you running after me. I didn't know you and. After what happened to Diana. And come to think of it, I still don't know you. Take your hands off me. Huh? Oh, okay. And in the future, please try to think of something better to do than running around scaring people. Good night. Well, I'll be dying. Uh, fever. How long have you been standing behind me? A couple of minutes. Did you see that girl I was talking to? She's Diane's friend. Yeah. But what time did you say Diane telephoned you this morning? Ten o'clock. Uh, well, that complicates things. What do you mean? I've been checking alibis. Seems that the carnival outfit, all except Diane, of course, had breakfast together this morning. Landau, the twin sister Sally, Carlotta, that Romeo character Jimmy, and Chickasaw. All of them. So what? So they sat down to breakfast a couple of minutes after ten. Oh. Landau was the first to leave about ten forty. Says he came right to your office. Yeah, that checks. Yeah. The rest hung around until after 11. That means all of them look pretty clean. That could mean that. Unless, of course, I can find a little dirt somewhere along the line to throw on one of them. See you later. Well, all of a sudden, it looked like the case was evaporating in thin air. I started walking toward my car, and then all of a sudden, I stopped. I could hear a struggle going on over behind one of the wagons. I hot-footed it over, and there was Lando. He had Chickasaw up off the ground, shaking him like a dog with an old shoe. Chickasaw's teeth were rattling. It looked like his head was going to fly off any moment. Carlotta was screaming at him. Hey, hey, cut out, Lando. Put Chickasaw down. Put him down. Yeah, that was a real heroic hobby, Lando. Chickasaw weighed your fingerprints in his throat for a long time. You sure he isn't too big for you? Lando was trying to kill him. I saw it. Well, what's it all about, Lando? He... Come on, come on, let's have it. He... Well, he said a bad thing to me. I guess I lost my temper, Mr. Shane. You have a lay hand on me again, I'll get you, Lando. I'll get you good. Incidentally, Lando, why didn't you tell me Diane had a twin sister? Why, well, I... I thought I did tell you. No, you didn't. I guess I forgot. <laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs> you okay, Chickasaw? Yeah, I guess so. What's it all about? Oh, I just reminded the big stoop of something he said once, mister, and he come at me. What was it he said? Oh, he's always crazy for Diane in his thick-headed way. I heard him say once she's going to be his or else. Hmm. Okay, Chickasaw, you better turn in. Come along, Chickasaw. Oh, just a minute, Carlotta. What do you want, Mr. Shane? I want to talk to you a minute. But Chickasaw... Chickasaw can manage. Sure. Yeah, I'm all right. I'll go over to my tent and get something. Okay, Carlotta, let's talk. About what? About you. Me? I do not know what... Yes, you do. When I ran up just now, you were screaming at Lando. Without any accent. Straight American. It is not true. Drop I was... the accent. But you... you Drop can... it, I said. All right, Mr. Shane. It's better. Guess you discovered my secret, Mr. Shane. The gypsy fortune teller is just an act, huh? Yeah. Oh, I... I know it sounds crazy. You wouldn't understand. I used to be an actress. I started slipping. You don't know how it makes an actress feel when she starts slipping. I played cheap shows and cheaper. And one day I couldn't face it anymore. I joined the carnival as a fortune teller. Hmm. How long ago was that? A long time ago. Awful long time ago. How come you and Chickasaw always stick up for each other? He's the only one in the carny that knows about me. He's always kept it a secret. I guess he knows what it's like to be a has-been, too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Carlotta turned away. It looked like she was crying. 
I got in my car and drove back to town, I was thinking about a lot of things. About the two has-beens, Carlotta and Chickasaw. About Diane's twin sister, Sally. And about the good-natured Landau picking on a guy half his size. Suddenly, I realized the case had come alive again. There was still a little matter of a few assorted airtight alibis. I got to my office and started for the phone to call Inspector Lefevre, but he beat me to it. Hello. You're in trouble, Shane. In trouble? Me? What? Look, Lefevre, what is it now? I've been checking alibis again, and I finally found one that don't hold water. Whose is it? Yours. What? Oh, now look, little man. You say Diane talked to you on the phone at 10 a.m. That's right. We double-checked the autopsy. Diane died not later than 9. I tell so you... she couldn't have talked to you at 10. For the last time... So you're in trouble. Lafever, I don't care what the autopsy showed. My phone rang at 10 o'clock and... Hey. Hey, wait a minute. I'm waiting. Lafever, hold everything and... And what? And don't leave town. It was 1 a.m. when I arrived back at the carnival. It was closed up. There were lights on in a couple of wagons. I could see Lando wandering around nearby. I looked up Chickasaw, and he pointed out Sally's wagon to me. The door was open. Just as I got there, someone came out. It was Jimmy, the sharpshooter. Well, the junior detective again. Yeah. You sure get around, don't you, lover boy? Enough. You don't mind if I have a talk with Sally, do you? You don't take advice, do you? Sometimes. When somebody tells me to lay off a case, I figure that's good reason to get interested. Suit yourself. Good night. <laughs> Come in. You again. What do you want? I want to know why you killed your sister. I... What? I think you killed Diane and impersonated her on the phone an hour later. No, you're wrong. I think that's why you were so scared when I grabbed you earlier tonight. Please, please, it's not true. No, it looks pretty convincing from where I sit. You've got to believe me. Protect me. Protect you? What are you talking about? I'm not Sally. I'm Diane. You... Let's have that again. It's true. I'm... I'm Diane, the one everyone thinks is dead. My sister was the one who was murdered. I've been posing a Sally ever since. Oh, look, this is getting more mixed up by the minute. If what you say is true, why haven't you told anyone? Because I've been afraid. Sally was killed because the killer thought she was me. If he ever finds out, he'll try again. Why? I... I think it's because of Jimmy and me. Who is it? Who's after you? Who killed your sister by mistake? I... I I'm not sure. I... Mr. Shane, the window, look out! Out of the corner of my eye, I caught the glint of a gun outside the window. I dove for the floor just as it went off. <laughs> The slug burned a furrow across the top of my head. But I staggered to the door and lurched outside. Then a fist like a bowling ball caught me on the side of the head. Down I went. In a moment, we'll be back with a thrilling climax to tonight's Michael Shane adventure. Well, what was a bullet crease on top of my head fist on the side of my head, I was feeling pretty poorly. I managed to get to my feet. There, staring down at me, was Landau. Mr. Shane, sir. You the one that socked me, Landau? Well, I guess I am, but I'm sure sorry. What were you doing outside the wagon? Well, I was standing over near the merry-go-round. I heard the shot come running over. I saw someone disappearing inside the big tent, and and you come out of the wagon. I didn't know it was you. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. You, you say somebody ran into the big tent? Who was it? Oh, I couldn't tell. The... Okay, Lando. I'll take a chance of telling the truth. Now, you stay put. I'm going to take a look in the tent. If there's nobody there, I'll get back to you. Believe me. We started walking toward the tent. It was a big one, maybe 50 feet in diameter. Everything was quiet. I got to the entrance. I pulled open the flap and dove inside. Low. The slug that whistled over my head meant Lando was telling the truth. The killer was in the tent with me. It was pitch black inside. I kept low and reached around until I found a stick. I tossed it over into a corner. Now I had the gun spotted. About 20 feet ahead of me, a little to my left. I inched my way closer. Closer. And I stopped. It's a folding 
chair in front of me. I got to my knees slowly. I grabbed the chair and shoved it to one side. Then I dove at the gun. I wrenched it away hard. The killer just sort of crumpled over there. And it was the Hasbro. A phony fortune teller, Carlotta. Well, the fever arrived about then. Took over from there. And afterwards, in his office, he filled in a couple of the missing pieces. What a girl, Carlotta. Yeah, she even had me feeling sorry for her early in the evening. Well, she's a good actress. Good enough to impersonate Diane on the phone after she killed her. Uh-huh. She filled in on the motive? Yeah, J- Jimmy was the motive. Oh? Carlotta had it bad for him. She taught him everything he knew about the carnival, but he sort of outgrew her on purpose. Yeah. Then he took up with Diane... Carlotta couldn't take that, but she killed the wrong twin first. And then when she found out her mistake, tonight she tried it again. Well, I guess that wraps up all the pieces, huh? Uh, not quite, Lefebvre. What do you mean? That torn half of the 50-buck bill you took away from me. What about it? I want it back. Oh, no. What do you mean, no? I gotta hold it for evidence. Evidence? Sorry. You mean I went through this whole deal, got shot and slugged and all for nothing? Look, Shane, what's the squawk? You got in to see the carnival for free. This is your director, Bill Russo, again. Our story is based on characters created by Brett Halliday and is written by Bob Wright. The music is composed and conducted by John Duffy. And Michael Shane is portrayed by Jeff Chandler. The New Adventures of Michael Shane is a Don W. Sharp production transcribed in Hollywood 